just recently I was commenting on this tweet that said something about a, a man ordering dessert is gay to me. Like, well, as a straight man, why are you ordering dessert? And I'm like, he can't. What? Like, some, uh, some quick pie? Like, we can't, like, sugar? I feel like that is so <laughs> detrimental to, like, the advancement of society. It is. We like, need a the man. sweets industry to carry on for me. <laughs> so, yeah. that's a problem. <laughs> Hey doll, it's the Gaily Dose, a group of gay men who have fun, elevated conversation to build a deeper sense of community in our gay world. Check us out at thegaylydose.com or at the Gaily Dose Pod on all social media. Girl, you better come get your Gaily Dose. Welcome to the Gaily Dose. This is Helmut Lucero Domogolski. I am Jakey B. Jones. And it's all- <laughs> I've never heard you say that. And as always, it is me, Dante Adonis Rhodes. As always, this episode is sponsored by AHF. AHF is where you can get all your gay healthcare needs addressed, regardless of your ability to pay. Find them at AHF.org. And if you're interested in sponsoring us, you can check us out at marketingatthegaylydose.com. That is marketing at thegaylydose.com. That is right, dolls. And we are so excited about this episode. We're going to actually skip over the getting to see what is up. Yeah, because fuck we, us. Yes, because we have us. a fantastic guest with us today, Mr. Obio Jones. And we hope to give you a dose of Obio in just a few. <laughs> Oh, girl, turn that down. Queer and Events is on. Dolls, welcome back to Queer and Events, your favorite fast-paced news segment brought to you by homos. <laughs> As always, <laughs> Queer and Events is brought to you by Joining Hearts. Joining Hearts is committed to making a tremendous difference in the city of Atlanta. Girl, Join team. the family and the fight by going to joininghearts.org. Dante, get us started. Baby. Ciao. I know it's been two weeks, but the girls are still talking about Will She's Smith bad. beating. He didn't beat his ass, but he slapped him. Girl, he slapped him with the, like the strength of a thousand men. Like you that know, was a slap. Though. And he came up like really inconspicuous, right? Yeah, he came up and he was like, up? "What's up? What's?" He was. It was, it was like he was. Like, I wasn't saying that. It, like the hit was. I've never seen someone get slapped that hard. Like that. I'm surprised like a tooth didn't slip, girl. So apparently. The reason oh, why he did it, you know, okay. he said, it's keep your wife's, keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth. Yeah. And honestly, I was not surprised that it happened. I okay. was not surprised, and not that I endorsed what happened, but the, them as a couple, Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith, have been under a lot of scrutiny for the past like year and a half. Just a, like people talking about them as individuals, their, their relationship. Yeah, like they've yeah. been under constant media scrutiny. Yeah. People have made them the butt of a gazillion jokes. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think kind of Will Smith has gotten to the point where like he's had enough and has, doesn't have the proper way to express it and that for him in that moment was there to express it and I think he didn't immediately think about the ramifications of his actions because baby there have been ramifications. I completely agree. I was actually completely shocked because when Chris initially gave the joke, Will laughed and you didn't, you see Jada a little bit kind of be like, that was not cute. Then you fully assume Will like looks over at Jada and he's like, shit, that ain't it. And just immediately started stepping. Yeah. And then and from there, I was like, I mean, there's so, yeah, there's so I many, there there's so many things because there's too. that's the thing I was gonna say. Duh. There's like you, you sit there and you go like, are they inebriated? Are they high? He has trauma yes. from not defending his mother in the past. Like, there's the stuff that's been said about them. You know, there's so many things, but ultimately, it's not acceptable now, human what is adult the behavior. Hot take on like, what do you think the response should be? Because my whole thing is like, I believe people should always get a chance to redeem themselves. It's not like he has like a history of like hitting people. Like he's just like chronic abuser of people. And I think that it was, while a poor decision, I think it has been ridiculous to see the media onslaught and like attack of his career when like you have people like Harvey Weinstein and a gazillion, like even like most recently there's a comedian who won a Grammy this like literally on Last Sunday night. won a Grammy who in 2017 admitted to like several acts of sexual misconduct with several different women just five years ago. And there's been like a bunch of other terrible shit that like a lot of prominent white men in media have done and have gotten a minimal consequence for. But then Will Smith has this one incident over like the course of his 30 year exquisite yeah, career. Highly and, and regarded it's like career. Amy Schumer literally said that she was so stunned by the slap but was upset that she couldn't make a joke about someone getting shot and killed. Like the stark contrast of like yeah. what people are allowed to do and then what black people are allowed to do. I think for it's me, I that's fully, been overanalyzed. For me, I fully agree. I think the media tore it apart like they obviously would, right? Yeah. These are celebrities going on stage physically assaulting somebody else. No matter who it was, it was going to be a huge spectacle. I can't sit here and like say, oh, let's not victimize Will in this because this is what the media does. The decision he made is what the media yeah. will do. But it's, 
It, it is surprising that it's Will, though. It right? is. It is, and that's I think the thing. Ultimately, like, first of all, like we haven't. You know, we're we're desperate for good news, right? We like meeting any news, anything yeah. we can Shock consume, value. right? And he gave us something that is so outside of what we've seen from him that it's almost like mm -hmm. so off brand where you're literally like what oh is this the real something but underneath you and i think it's sad that and, we are like trying to make it the final and, and it, honestly it's not about that he chose to make it part of his story and now he has to work through that and it will time heals all wounds mm -hmm. right i believe that he can prove himself out to be a greater person over that but it's unfortunate, and that's just, it's a lesson for all of us, the things we do. Have consequences. Exactly. Absolutely. Ciao. Completely agree. Well, I'm glad you and had And speaking that of history being made, because that was history at the Oscars. Ciao. That was. We do have history being made tonight in this very moment. The nomination has fully gone through for Katanji Jackson Brown. Excuse me, Katanji Brown Jackson. Get, get she is now being fully nominated as a Supreme Court Justice. And yes. if this fully goes through, which is all good news, she will be making history in every regard. She'll be the first black woman as a Supreme Court justice. The way she went through with composure, oh, through all yeah. the questioning that it takes, it was, ridiculous. was flawless. I've never seen composure like that in my life. And I was like, I think I'm sexually attracted to the moment. To the energy. <laughs> to the energy. It was just so, it was so confident and it was so well composed. I was like, I need all this. So big like, things weird. <laughs> big claps and big snaps. It for is right, right. Especially because we just uplift any of the people who are in our minority status, taking it up, and that's just a good thing. <laughs> I'm serious, weird, girl. You know, I don't know what like, to put I it. Would you say, know? Though, I am so excited to live in a time and moment where like mm. my people are being celebrated as they should be. It's it, what's upsetting to me is watching the process of her getting nominated and her going through all this. Yeah. Is like people are like. We, we literally nominated the two most unqualified candidates of the Supreme Court under Trump's regime, yep. as a, a regime. And, and it was like not questioned by Republicans, like this makes so much sense. And we found out who's honestly extremely most qualified. qualified for this yeah. position. And like the questions they were bringing to her, I'm like, this is bullshit. Because I like, honestly, very, I, would, I would have answered, like I would have not had compulsion, it, but I would have oh, not It would have triggered this. me a little bit. Like, she was so like, dumb, like, it was spectacle at its best. Mm -hmm. Also, making... Making news, right? Making more news, making it so that their fans would listen. I mean, it's just, it's, it is, it is disgusting. Yeah. The it's disgusting. It's disgusting. And we, and we honestly, part of us is like, as me as a human, is just kind of done with that. Like, why are we still making a spectacle? But it's because the masses like it, like a show. Um, speaking of a show and spectacle, Franklin Graham. So Franklin Graham is Billy Graham's son, and Billy Graham. Um, and the 1940s was like one of the biggest, if not the biggest, internationally known um, preachers. Um, and basically it was huge followings in the South and is often looked to, um, that family's often looked to sort of like for leadership for the Christian community. Now granted, he's just one of these voices, but particularly said very, very scathing things like about the trans uh, movement, that it was effectively like, from the devil, that like Christians, anyone who supported Jesus Christ needed to be against the trans movement, um, that it's evil, um, very, very much typified it around like, you know, we, we are hearing people speak to, you know, the, 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 the pain to our children, like, the, like changing their genitalia, well, like overly, overly excessive sort of speak as to what's actually going on with these people who identify differently and basically said, that like there has to be a regime change in this country, we've kind of lo lost God kind of thing. And that also a, de a demonization of Disney, which is hilarious. So it's like- Girl, these people are in an uproar about Miss Disney. Yes, uproar. but which is so funny because now that Disney's <laughs> kind of tried to position itself differently around Don't Say Gay, which actually we, we spoke earlier about like a lot of negative yeah. press around and it. And not to run around, run a tangent. You know that now this Ron DeSantis in fucking Florida is now trying to make them remove Disney's special privileges as being able to work as like their own government inside of Orange County. It's like a whole yeah, thing Yeah, good now. luck with that. Really? Like he's, getting support, he's getting support for senators from it. Okay. This is nuts. We you know, see. I will say one thing I'm tired of seeing is the onslaught of attack onto the trans community by any group of people. Absolutely. Nowhere in the Bible does it talk about identification and how it affects like holiness in the world. Like, this this was like such a nuanced thing in the world seeing like them take a religious spin on yet another thing that literally has no effect on people. Like trans people who are transgendered literally is not even indicative of their sexuality. The Bible can speak to some points some twisted shit about sexuality, but like 
Nothing in the Bible yeah, talks about like man to woman, woman to man, and how that affects the world and how it works. Yeah. Nor does it affect your children's lives. Like no child has been traumatized by trans people in the world right now. Right. Like your five year old daughter is not watching Disney, seeing representation of people in different spaces, and like taking on trauma from seeing this. Whether right. it be gay, whether it be trans, whether it be lesbian, bisexual, like these are not right. things that have any ramifications in the world. And it is so fucking exhausting to live in a world where this is something that's constantly being repeated yeah. and constantly being drawn up. Yeah, and the part that's really, really exhausting about it is it's an unknown. So there's this ability for the church to go this unknown, to rally the people together, right, in this sort of, like, we're all going to go this route. And what I would encourage people to do is to actually get to know a parent of a trans child or a trans child. Do that before you come out with your very specific religious point of view, because you can, or listen to their voices on podcasts or on YouTube shows, because like once you do, you get it. Like this is Honestly, not about, it's but, so but it's like, like such a pat on the back of them. Like you need to just drop your fucking point of view on these people in their lives. They have no effect on you. I'm tired of like people needing to gain insight on something so that they don't hate it. Like you should never have to gain insight to dislike something that has no effect on you. Like I why, think, okay. why do, why, no, why do oppressed people's pander to the like to the needs of people who don't like them for no good fucking reason. I think when somebody like Franklin Graham, who there's no surprise that he is spewing this hate, right? Jesus. That's why there's media spectacles on him, right? When people really believe in what Franklin may say, you do need insight to change that perspective. But why do you Because the sad truth stupid. is people are listening to Frank. Yeah. The sad truth is people are listening to Frank and you know, Helmut's not wrong and you're not wrong because let's be honest, we can be frustrated that we even need to garner patience to say, oh, we'll give them the ability to then educate themselves. But we have to be patient through this time of intolerance that they may have. It's right on both ends. To be frustrated with this is so real, but also to have the maturity to say like, let's actually let them have the ability to critically think for themselves, gain insights on this, so they cannot make this media, media spectacle reality. But, and, but, and, and I would say, like, have patience, but I, I demand it. Meaning, I really do think that it is all of our obligations. Anytime we're faced with something and we don't know, we're told something, like, inform and educate yourself. We live in a modern place. Google this shit. You should have already listened to seven or three or ten voices talk about this. It's accessible information. In the past, the amount of trans voices are so small percentage-wise, you're probably not going to have a lot of friends mm -hmm. that are trans. That's just the reality. But you are going to be able to get access to it. And I'm tired of people being mindless sheep in these religions. It's our responsibility in this modern era to pick up some material and learn. Yeah. Critically Ciao. Think. Messed out on that. <laughs> <laughs> We know it took some time, but we got your human heart on. What's up, dolls? <laughs> this week's human heart on is my girl, Hope Giselle. She's just such a good activist. She's an author. She's a sister. She's a daughter. She now has a little bullet she showed you guys, and, and there's just the cutest little thing. She's an activist in, in the space. She's, I mean, just dynamic. She's dope. I just wanted to give her some flowers today and just say, like, you are just dope. Please check her out on all platforms, everywhere you can find Hope Giselle. Her hopefuls is what she calls us. So yeah, hope is just dope. She is absolutely a full chameleon. Oh, right? for sure. She's a full-on activist. A couple notable things, right? She started the first LGBTQ community uh, organization at Alabama State University. Incredible. She's written two books now, right? Both about activism in the black community, but also the LGBTQ community. And she's in her twenties. And she's in her twenties. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> What am I not doing? Right? <laughs> and she's got her own nonprofit called Allow Me. So, like, somebody beautiful to spotlight this week. I'm so glad you let us know about her. Seriously. So proud of her. Seriously, yeah. yeah. Let's zoom into that doll and double click. Hey, doll. So, today I want to talk about something that sometimes isn't as cute to chat about, and that is grieving um, or loss. So we know there are many types of grieving. Um, there's the loss of a family member. There can be the loss of a pet. There can be um, there can be the loss of a child who goes off to college. Um, there are various forms of grieving that happen to us throughout life, and there are also interesting ways that that can happen, particularly or uniquely for a gay person. Um, when you come out, you may lose particular people in your life, or certain friends may shy away from you. Well, that's not even just particularly about being gay. 
Honestly, as we evolve our software and become new versions of ourselves, other people fall away because maybe they are not as close to you or as important to you for that time in your life. My encouragement to you dolls is to embrace grieving just like any other part of life, there is death. Um, the fear of death is one of those things that often keeps people from living, from doing what they should or could do. And very similarly, we like to sometimes avoid pain. We like to avoid change and therefore we avoid grief. Maybe you avoid letting go of the friend you need to let go of, or you avoid sitting with uh, that grief and allowing it to be. But I think it's very important to number one, expect that you're going to have a lot of grieving in life. That's part of life. Number two, I think it's important to take the time to grieve. So give yourself that opportunity to lament that friendship or lament that relationship and give that its space. Remember that sometimes in life things come and go. So a friend may go for a time and if they're meant to come back in your life, if they'll come to new realizations, they do. And it's great because that friend that was maybe distant comes back. And sometimes they become distant and they stay distant and that's okay. But taking the time to grieve and acknowledge that loss is very, very important to give yourself that space because then you can get back to the living and the growing that needs to come after that particular element or aspect of life has been removed. So remember, it is about um, embracing that grieving is part of life, loss is part of life, death is part of life at its macro levels and its micro levels. Acknowledge it, give it the space you need to grieve, and then move forward with the new learnings. And remember that we are also always carrying the very good energies and experiences that the life with us held and brought. <music> A dose of gender norms with Obio. Dolls, I want to welcome our guest, Obio Jones. Not to get confused with Jakey Jones. We, there's, there's no relation here, so don't worry about it. <laughs> I found this dude on Instagram. I thought he was an incredible voice, an incredible light for gay men everywhere. His content creation is out of this world. Yeah. Please tell us what you're all about <laughs> and what you like to promote. How do I follow that? Let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm as amazing as you said I am. That was a good, yeah, that was a good no build up. I welcome. We're so excited to have you. I'm glad to be here. We've got so, the yeah. male Beyonce on the Gaily Dolls oh, today. Please. Please. <laughs> I wish. So, yeah, I'm a content creator. I, um, I'm a content creator. I don't even know how to really define it, to be honest. I create content that. I'd be so happy to define it. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. okay. To me, you bring such a good theme to any gay issue. You put a light on it. He's got a ton of Instagram reels. He has a podcast that I believe you are still doing. Yep. Is that correct? Yep. And then a full YouTube channel. And everything is so well inversed with like specific topics in the gay male perspective. He even steps outside of that into the male perspective altogether. He talks about the black community. I just think your level of getting into intricate details and speaking to him Nobody can't relate. I just want to point out that I did not pay him to say this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I did not. You, got a rap. you have a rap here with us today. We real. have a fan in the room, doll. <laughs> but we do, and I would yeah. echo his things to say that echo. you really do um, some really, your content isn't just anything. You really do create space, as your, your, hat, you. your hat says. Thank you. I you create that. a space to be your intersection for a lot of other people. I and these that. boys are sold out and that's on the goal. His Instagram. Oh. So, so how could you get into content creation? Let's give some backstory. So yeah. like, what does that look like for you now, and how did you get there? Yeah, well, not to be too long-winded. So I came out the closet, I guess you would still call it that at this point. I, I came out at, in 2019, and I think for me... Three was, years ago. Three years ago, yep. yeah. And I think for me, it was more like... He's a baby. I have so, right. <laughs> I have so much like experiences like through trauma, through just like shame, self-doubt, all the things. And I'm imagining there's other men who are the same stuff, right? And so I was like, okay, well, now that I'm comfortable, how can I like bring my people with me, right? Like I'm trying to hear your tongue in this space. And so it became like yeah. my own little like start this conversation. And I honestly was like, I already had a YouTube channel up. It wasn't really like active to be honest. But I was like, eh, it's up. Like, why not? Made a video. And people were just like, oh, I didn't have this. And I was like, oh, I might be onto something. And next thing you know, 54 episodes later, here we are. And you started with the mission of doing one a week for a year straight, right? That was the goal, yeah. All within a certain theme. Yeah, it was all about like different microaggressions I had experienced, right? Yeah. Like just different things that I just like, well, I would literally call my homeboys, like, I had the first 10 episodes done, right? I would call my friend, like, 
what have you experienced? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I'm, I'm out of experiences here. Like, okay, bottom shaming. God, let me add that to the list. Or, you know, I was talking yeah. to my friends about their experiences and I would just highlight it. Yeah. It's funny, the microaggressions <laughs> word I actually learned from listening to you, no, which no, I had no. not heard before. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay. I was like, okay, microaggressions. And I felt so like so powerful using it in it context with the right. I was like, it unlocks a part of your brain and you're like, wait, yeah, I gotta track this. Because shit. you knew what it was. You knew mm. that when people are saying things that tread on your turf, there was, you wanted to be like, that, just that thing. But when it's, you're like, microaggression. Okay. And that's the onus on the community, but there also are things that happen within the community that, that affect us, oh, right? Yeah. Like everything is not like homophobia outside of the space. No. It happens within it. So much. And you're like, wait a minute, this is yeah. kind of like, like bottom family, for instance. I don't think traditional, like, you bottom. They're just like, you're, you get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's it. Yeah. But they don't, when the other way they say, you, like, you're a bottom, <laughs> like, right? Like, but in the gay world, there's a little bit of a stigma attached to it. So there how is do honestly. we those things up? But what I love is you speak with zero fear to the things that feel taboo. Yeah. In my opinion. What are some and of the taboo things that he's spoken to? I'm intrigued. So <laughs> one of my favorite is this was not even in the gay realm. And I mentioned this to you like a few minutes ago. But he spoke to how straight men have to carry this fine line between maybe I'll script this perfectly because I've watched it so many times. But he's like, they have to carry this fine line of being naturally beautiful, but not um, not taking care of themselves too much to the point where they look metrosexual. They have to be kind, but not be emotional. They have to really drive this fine line in between what it means to be straight to be the perfect man right and that pressure on straight men so when i heard obio as a gay man speak to that with straight men i was like this man should preach <laughs> you know and that's why i wanted to bring you on because i think your voice is so important because it's all full circle like yeah. like i think the more you clock quote unquote straight men it more like Perpetuates the idea that behavior is indicative of sexuality, and it's not. And it's not. There are, there's two very not, different things. It has nothing to do with this. Like yeah. Everybody's looking at you like, well, you did this, so you must be gay. It has nothing to do with who wants to have sex. Well, and it's so. It, it's really so important. What I love about that aspect of you. Um, this is a silly aside. I have three straight guy friends that always talk about wanting to be on the dose because they're like, this is for us too which seems like the most far away. Yeah. But if you think about it, they are suffering with all those different layers, right? Yeah. And they're the ones that are not performing the best right now in school systems, not performing well in terms of like society. They're just not engaging the same way. And I wonder if it's because they're a little confused, right? You're getting all these messages. Can't yeah. be this, can't be, th but they are emotional. They aren't, anyway. And then you have a straight no, moment. I, I, feel like, I feel like the straight man is getting shit on by society right now. Let's talk about like the trending words, toxic masculinity, mm -hmm. um, gaslighting, like especially on TikTok, all these girls love to bring up the topic of icks, right? What's and, a lot, and ick is, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to speak to TikTok, but <laughs> all these girls are making testimonials on TikTok and they're like, just found out my new ick for a dude. And, I, and one could be as dumb as, I saw him tie his shoe the other day. Oh, yeah. like something that turns you on in a guy? It turns you off. off. Oh, yeah, off. So someone tying the shoe turns him off? Yeah. And to yeah. me, I'm like, I'm flabbergasted by the whole idea, but I mean, it, it's a, we're creating a weird space where it's okay to shit on the straight man right now. But like, like, again, it's just full circle in my opinion. Absolutely. Right? Like, I did a video just recently, I was commenting on this tweet that said, um, it's a, a, a black woman, she says, something about a, a man ordering dessert is gay to me. Like, well, as a straight man, why are you ordering dessert? And I'm like, you can't. What? Like, some, uh, some quick pie? Like, we can't, can't, like, sugar? I feel like that is so <laughs> detrimental to, like, the advance of society. It's like, you put people in these boxes that don't allow them to exist outside of, like, a man should do this, a woman should do that. That's why I'm always so against gender roles, because I'm like, this is not indicative to your success as a human, nor is it, like, a, like a significant contribution to your role in society. So, like... Why is ordering a pie something that has seemed like so like yeah, dismal to you okay. as a man? <laughs> yeah, like you order a pie like, like oh, you must take dick in the ass. Like Right. Well, and what's so important is at the end of the day, we need great straight dads to our gay future. We need men to be able right? to order pie, like at the base of that. Like, yes, but like men should be able to order pie without like that being compromising to their image we as like need a the man. Sweets industry to carry on for me <laughs> solely. Yeah. And that's a promise. But I know a lot of people consider you to be very passing with masculine features. I mean, Helmu even mentioned it earlier, but like he considers you very heterosexually passing. Which is interesting. But yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask, what microaggressions do you feel like you get from that? I think a bunch. I think honestly, which was weird to me, I would always say like, I didn't just come out once, right? Like, you know, you're mm -hmm. constantly in spaces where people assume you to be straight, so you have to come out again, right? Because mm -hmm. like, there's a certain level of like access that you get 
from all pri privileged people, right? Like there's just a level of like, I'll go this far with you as a gay man, but I'll go this far with you as a straight man, right? So it's like for us, even now with some of my friends, mm, let's not use friends, some people that I know um, who are straight, they'll handle me differently having known that I'm gay. But when you thought I was straight, I had full access to you as a person. You were affectionate with me. You gave me all the things that you had to give. But now that I'm gay, you felt you have to withhold some of that because I don't know if you're going to be turned on or what have you. And so it becomes this really interesting space of like, I know you think I'm straight as well. And this is a little bit to me being a proud gay man, right? Like, I know you are viewing me as straight. Is it now my objective or duty to correct you? Even if you haven't said anything. But I know I'm being handled as if I'm straight, right? Yeah. Like, like, she bad, ain't she? She's cute, but I'd rather he. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and it becomes that the name of the game where it's like, yeah. do I then announce it here? Because we saw that earlier, like, there's a certain, like, I don't want to say like mantle, right? But there's a certain level, like, when you kind of came into your own that you feel like, I want to, like, be a beacon of light, right? You kind of want to be a person who can, like, you know what I'm saying, share some light in the community that we're all not this and some of us are that and that kind of thing. Yeah. But you can get lost in that. And I did for a short period of time where I'm like, my whole life can't be devoted to me as a gay man, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm, I, it's a part of me and a big part, to be honest, because I like, never, like, it can't be all that there is to me. Yeah. And I think when people find that you're gay, they make it all that you are to you. But likewise, when you're straight, they kind of make that all that you are. Now you want to fight, you want to like watch sports, you want to yeah. have sex with women, you want to do all these things. And I may, as a, even as a straight man, not want to do those things. It's kind of like people only can view as like polars versus like there being it's like so some funny, kind of yeah. flexibility in between the two. And like even with sexuality, people like you're either gay or you are either straight. There's no room for any kind of attraction to pieces of another gender, which I think is also like so interesting in the world we people live in. People don't now. know though. Right? Like even my mom, I was having a conversation, just one of our family friends, um, she has a girlfriend. And I was like, oh, is she, is she gay? And mom was like, well, does she has a girlfriend? Well, she can be pan, she can be bi, she can be, she can be so many parts of the, of the spectrum. I don't know what she is, right? But this is an assumption that you with the same gender, you're gay. And that's where it stops. And it's like, there's so many more parts. Well, and what's so interesting too is that women have led men in a lot of these areas. So a lot more women, I've noticed, identify, they grab their non, like, uh, non-binary or they grab their, um, I'm, um, what is it, pansexual maybe? or... Um, and, and you look at that and you're like, or bi, even bisexual, and you're like, oh, there are probably as many men who have not yet evolved to be able to speak those words oh, sure. because there's so much judgment on a straight man to be this very, very, very specific thing. For sure. um, I definitely think there's an interesting part, though. I, I was going to say it now, now, usually when I talk and, and late, or, um, emote, then people are like, yeah, he's gay, right? Yeah. But there's so many times, even when you're just st standing in a suit, mm -hmm. And people interacting, and you know they're like, "Oh, he's straight," and you could just tell certain people interactions like, interaction with women. But the minute I I talk, <laughs> oh the minute I talk or act, then it's clear, right? It's but so it's funny because you're like, "Well, I'm gonna see how long I can play along." I've never done that. Really, I, no, I I, 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 have, I have not I have. had that experience much. Like when you spoke to a second coming out, I was like, "Oh my god, I'm so glad." It's almost a privilege if I can wear that. Like I walk into any room, and the way I strut, and the way I hold myself, and I don't care how my voice sounds, my mannerisms. They really demonstrate that I'm gay. Like I'm confident in that. I don't get confusion. Or from if we want to get on the slippery slope, it doesn't demonstrate the gay. It demonstrate that you have feminine attributes. Yes. Because yes. because I think what we're dealing with in society is now is people are taking feminine attributes and equating it to sexuality. When mm. like someone like Todd Chrisley has five kids and a, a wife. I said, I said it earlier. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. he, he is someone who is mm -hmm. not masculine at all, really. And then like he is a loving husband to a wife and kids. So I think sometimes you have to take away and say you don't necessarily have the privilege of being feminine meaning you're openly gay and maybe you have the disadvantage of making an entire section of society come off as gay because you're feminine and imagine there was no Shit. stigma on gay like there was no stigma on being gay how many straight guys would be more feminine how many people would support themselves more but yeah. I think everybody's running from stigma gay people are running from stigma like even in the gay community it's like how much how mass how much masculinity can i reserve still even as a gay man because mm -hmm. i need to be respected admire the things you know what i mean it's funny because um, as i age right now and i will tell you a big influence on this has been dante specifically okay, with the podcast because he really has owned his femininity in a way that i was like oh so by him modeling something and his friends even though like get dressed up and wear makeup and just be whatever they are yeah. right and i've no i've noticed it'll be a random weekend and i'm like just, I'm like sashaying through the park, and I'm yeah. like, "What? Yeah. Right?" And then you're like, what? "Yes, I am. That's that's what I'm doing because I'm trying." I never out thought this. I'd inspire someone to go to the park, child. But I never, but I'm trying out a skill For that sure. I have never tried before. Yeah. I have started to wave like this now. <laughs> like, Do too fast. And once I've once I started this, I was like, "Jake Jones is over." 
Yeah, we have to shut this light out. I was like, now he's now he's waving like Prince Diane, <laughs> Princess Diane. I was yeah. like, no. Oh God in hell, help That's us cute. all. Because the full goal is to be yourself, right? The full goal at the end of the day to be hard stopping is to be yourself. It is, but not to identify as anything. You're right. The hard part is allowing it? ourselves to discover what self really is, right? When you pull off these vestiges of expectation, yep. because they really are, That's right? The things that served us to like you know, protect the family, right? Like, I am not scavenging for food anymore the same way. And were you ever? You know, they were another time. Ciao, we don't know for sure. I'd have been died, died at 35 and I've been lucky, long life, yay. Because I, what makes it hard though is you have to unlearn who you once were, right? Like a lot of us have to unlearn behaviors that were like, at, that at one point served us, because if I'm being really transparent, at one point being perceived as straight served me. I got opportunities because of it. I was comfortable in spaces because of it. So now I have to let go of the behaviors that I was doing that was indicative of a person pursuing comfort. And so now have to, to be myself, I have to let go of the fact that what is, and even now, like, I was telling my sister this earlier today, I was talking about beauty, right? And just to give it up for two seconds. And from, uh, from people- We who like are, derailing. <laughs> people who are super attractive, right? You then have to wonder at some point, do you think you're attractive or do you just believe in people thinking you're attractive? Because I mean, if you hear it every five seconds, who's gonna like, I'm not going to like argue with you, but you call me pretty every five seconds. You call me pretty every five seconds. I'm going to assume that I'm probably pretty. Likewise, like certain behaviors, it's like, are we masking because we're just masking? That's how we were going to be. Or are we just like holding on to who we had to be when we were young? Like for me, you have a choice. You had to fight. You had to play sports. It wasn't like you had the opportunity to play sports or, you know, draw. No, you, boys don't draw. Boys fight and play sports. This is what happened. And so now as an adult, I'm sitting with self like, wait a minute, do I actually want to be whatever? Or is it like, do I get to decide for myself who I want to be? Like, is this a natural trajectory? Like, what does that look like? And so I think to your point, unlearning who you want to to then be as frilly as whatever as you choose. <laughs> so, you know, whatever you want to do, then it'd be okay. <laughs> and I have to worry about, but then again, if we're being honest, we're about safety. Because every space is not safe yep. for queer assuming people, yeah. right? Like, it's not like you can just walk down the street, right. the street and our trans women are being are being killed at a long race. Yeah, they are. So it's not just as simple as I'm gonna be me and everybody's gonna love it. Like <clears> even <throat> coming out, it's not as like I'm not friends. You're gonna lose some people. I lost most of my friends and most of my subscribers. Mm -hmm. Like most of them. I mean, I, I, what, I, what I got in return. I mean, who cares? Bye, y'all. But you know what I'm saying? In the beginning, That's it was what... like. Oh, it's so man. funny. You're speaking to a lot of things that I think can coexist, right? Like the mm. mechanisms you use to unlearn something. You then are like reaching for authenticity that you're like, wait. Is that still a part of who I am? Me specifically, like yeah. going to the gym, being quote unquote a jock, working out. A jock. That is truly, <laughs> that is truly who I feel like I am. Yeah. I love being physical. I yeah. love being an athlete. A lot of people would deem that as masculine. And just because I'm like this really free person and I feel comfortable, especially in the city of Atlanta, to be yeah. authentically me, I am still trying to unlearn why do I feel masculine? when I just have testosterone running through my body from a workout, right? Oh, that's the only it's, time you feel masculine? No, okay. but I'm just, it's just one, it's one solid example. It's funny because I've often asked myself this question, like what is masculine? And, and that may sound silly, no. but it's I honest. think of things like, I'll use an example, aggression, right? Mm -hmm. So like, but then I know women who are so aggressive yeah. because they are often told that they are not, in fact, they're smart as fuck aggressive. They'll make a man sometimes. What is smart as fuck aggressive? They'll mentally. make a man. They'll make a man. They might. They'll let men Aaron think Rockett. that they are the aggressors, and they're working other angles to still win or move something in a direction. And just saying why it's like we say it's this, right? But women can exhibit it too. It's just not the same thing. It's maybe not like you gender know, roles. It's not saying we should go away from It's just it's still it goes boils back down to gender roles, and I think a large part of our own self discovery that people often ignore. It's how you present into the world. So it's like you can all day long say you want to break this stigma and not play into this, but then it's like it's socially, in career, in relationships, are you letting people have that space to explore themselves or are you like Xing people out for exhibiting those things? So then like if you dis disincentivize other people from doing it, why should you be doing mm, it? Okay. Like a lot of times so I can talk about how like I wish I could be more feminine, but then you refuse it a, a man who's feminine. Right. So then it's like what makes the next person want to stop doing something if you can preach it, but you don't practice it? Yeah. Right. Because you won't date a feminine guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're open to enforcing yeah, yeah. a stigma apart from yourself. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. It's like literally I like, was talking to one of my friends and he was talking about how his um he struggles with his mom accepting his boyfriend because his boyfriend is black but his mom 
has always been comfortable around black people up until now. So it's like this thing where like you're telling the world to be accepting of black people, but you yourself are uncomfortable when it becomes intimate for you. Mm. A crazy. real decision. Yeah. yeah. It's like people all the time, they talk about what they want in the world because it doesn't apply to them. But when it does apply to them, they run away from it. it sounds like we're hypocrites. <laughs> but well, I mean, sometimes, yeah. sometimes we yeah. are. Sometimes we are in yeah. the gay community, right? We have a lot of that oh, home, the phobia for our own selves. Yeah, it's like the women who say like, I don't mind having a gay friend, but my son can't be gay. Right. Yeah. It's like, so what the, what the fuck does that mean? I think it's what that stigma it carries, right? Yeah. Like, and like, it's hard to be who, you, who you, no one's created space for you to be. Oh, create space, guys. Yeah. But like, like it's... <laughs> But like it's, like it's, hard, but it's, yes. it's real though. Like you're saying, everybody said all these beautiful things. Like I said in the interview you're referring to, like women want accidentally handsome, really, really tough guys. That's just how it goes. Like you want them to be like beautiful, but no skin routine, no hair, no barber. No, That's like, you what know, you said. That's just what you said. Wake up in the morning, Clean nails, but no manicure. Like, you know, so like, it's so funny because one of my, my one of my favorite straight friends, he's totally. He's totally uh, what's called metrosexual, yeah. right? Oh, he, talking about. Yeah, you do know who I'm talking about. And he, but but he keeps that all together, so he looks great, right? Right? And he's like, listen, it goes with the territory. But that's a woke man, right? He's comfortable yeah. owning those things so that yeah. he can do those things, which is tough. Like, yeah. which is super. It is. It is. You should have to you fight stand for who out. you are, like every second of the day, and say, do you do you choose between who I really am or what I want out of life? Like, mm-hmm. right? And so now it's like this, this dichotomy of like. Like totally this really juxtaposition of being like gorgeous but like not caring that I'm gorgeous and being like physically fit but not too physically fit where I'm like in the gym too too long for you to think I'm amongst the gays. You know what I mean? So it becomes yeah. this really weird conversation about like all these things that just are frustrating to me. But anyway. A dose of frustration. <laughs> well what is what is <laughs> awesome okay. is that we're having yeah. these conversations yeah. and these conversations probably weren't had like this before. Right, and as we continue to have them, we keep breaking down these various barriers, not just for us, for our viewers, and for for generations to come. It's really, really cool. Silly to have these conversations, though, for the sake of straight people in the midst of them being homophobic. Right, like, that's, oh. that's kind of weird to me. Like I'm, I'm like rallying for your freedom in the midst of you like rallying for my suppression. And it's yeah. like, why, why do I have to educate you? <laughs> On you, yeah, why do right. I have to? Yeah, but there, like, but the there more are. Comfortable I am, the more comfortable you are. I'm sorry. But, but there, but I think that there's a couple things. A, there are some that get it. There's those allies that helped us and protected us to come out. Yeah, exactly. But I also think that this is the part of why gay society is so important to straight society over time. So we're like in this time experiment, right? Like, give us a hundred years more of being out. How much more will these ideals, right, push down into? mothers and fathers to kind of see their child and let them be, right? Just let, let them be who they are. Create the space in your own home despite the fact that you live in Knoxville, in the mountains, and, you know? But how many gays are going to have to, like, be burnt out for that to be a thing? Because we're, we're seeing even now the people who are like, well, I have gay friends, or I love my gay da 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 It's because they work damn hard to be that for you, right? Like, most of us have, have had to excel in life to get baseline respect. Yep. So you so you say, okay, I'm gonna be the class president, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be physically I'm gonna do all these like perfect things where meanwhile other people and other groups get to like be very mediocre and still get respect. But that's like all of them. <laughs> Women, people of color, Facts. gays, right? Facts. It is just part of where we are in our society at the time that we're born. So we just own the space that we're in and then become the best version of ourselves to lead the future to a better place. That's what we got. Just all the intersectionality when you add yes. it. Like, we're, we're, yes. Like, not just black. Someone's a black and gay. We're not like just yeah. black and someone's a black female and gay. Black woman and gay. Just so much. Yes, <laughs> yes. I have loved our time together. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, I want to st- I want to talk more, <laughs> honestly, dolls. We I can talk forever. Whoa. Um, we're going to have to do another dolls show. I know, I know. We'll have to have it back on, boo. Um, um, yes, on. but I have to actually... Absolutely um, echo the sentiments earlier. So proud of the work you're doing. You, so proud of the light that you are shining. Very excited, very genuinely excited to see what kind of new things we will see from you over the future and wishing you the absolute best. I appreciate that. Thanks yeah, so thank much. Ringling dingling. I think someone called for Dr. Dose. Welcome to Dr. Dose. You can call in and get advice anytime you want. Just call us at 323 673 one four seven four dolls, and as always, Dr. Dose is brought to you by Atlanta Pride. Uh, more than just a parade, Atlanta Pride is committed to gender and sexual diversity progress. You can check them out at atlantapride.org. So today we have Miss Dante, Dante, who's going to be our doctor. Yeah. 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 Nasty piece of doctor. Yes, let's listen to our uh, caller. Hey guys, I'm actually not going to leave 
my name today. Me and my partner moved in with my dad. We could save money and try to buy a house soon. And one afternoon recently, I came home early um, from work and found my dad and my boyfriend, uh, I guess, having sex or just some sort of sexual activity on the couch. Obviously, I yelled at him, kind of asked my boyfriend to leave immediately, and I'm not talking to my dad. What do you guys think I should do? Thanks so much. Oh. You know it's a mess when they can't leave their name on it. It's anonymous tease. Um, wow. It's almost hard to believe, honestly. I can't swallow this one. I can't. Uh -huh. This Digest is like a um, privilege you have. Um, <laughs> but no, that is crazy. So the situation goes, so I guess they live with the dad. And this is a gay couple. And I guess the dad is gay. We didn't find that out. And I wonder the dad is We don't know. Is the dad, dad gay? I don't know. So come Tom, I wonder, like, in what situation are, like, did you come in on the couch fucking? Did you walk into the bedroom? Is it just some nasty blow job? Is it like a DP situation? Like, he said sexual activity, right? Like he didn't say what. It was, they said I probably was like. This dad like, better not be married like, to a mom. Like, let's just assume this man's alone. Wait a minute, so know. like what if he's just finding out his dad likes men on top of with his boyfriend at the same time? So like, how, you, how do you like encounter both? <laughs> I want to so like, how long have you been with a boyfriend? Like, is this like, yeah, a, like a year long relationship? This is like your partner of 10 years. Cause then that, that like makes it worse. How, like, but like, what do you I, act first? But also how much would that change? There's like true. two very heavy problems. That's right? true. <laughs> Somebody you were dating, whether it was three months or three years, is that having sex with your so, father. That made that matter so because it was like a deep root of like, cause then it's like been there for three years, I've been fucking my dad Okay, for okay, but let me, let me pause really quick. You have two people you love that did something and broke your trust all at once. Oh. Talk about the trauma in that, Jesus Christ, right? Yes, you Cause you think, you, you think your dad would care for you enough to not, to not have sex with your partner and you think the same of your partner, right? With your dad. Yeah, and that's, in his house. That's we need to talk about the conversations that he may need to have with both of them if there is a relationship he still wants to have. Because he threw them out and he's not talking to his dad, which I understand. I probably want to talk to him again, Chad. That know. might be the end of the road. What's his us. name? I would have we, some to say. I think for me, the first step is making a priority of saying, do I want to still foster these relationships? No, I don't think, and my doctor don't is child. Well, listen, your Sometimes. dad, listen. That, that could be step one. It's very hard to have an ex-dad. I mean, it happens all the time. <laughs> No, hold on. Is that your dad? <laughs> but like, I, 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 I would first like, because like we don't have context. Like, was it is the dad gay? Like, is there some context here where like the son, like this boyfriend and him have? I have no clue what's going on. I would yeah. start with my dad. Honestly, and too, I would if my like, dad what? wasn't out the closet, it might be more forgivable because I'm like, you've been going through this, trying to find a way to deal mm, with it. Nigga. I but think you out, it makes it worse because you're delivering and fucked my boyfriend. It's not, there's no you didn't say fucked. He said sexual fucked. activity. Okay, that's fucked. He what would have said a blowjob if it was a blowjob girl. Think, what are your thoughts over here? You know, that's a lot of a lot of that is real. Right. I guess my first question it's is like insane. I guess my first question is like, like, did you know your dad was into guys first? That, that's that to me that is the preliminary is. question to me because so, like now I have to digest not just you mm -hmm. having been with my, with my boyfriend, but now you're like, like dad, like are you are you like, like what are you like what's going on here? A, a and then B, I think, what do you do because you live with this person? Like we, we can say take a break for two or three days, but like I have to come home to you. So like to both of them. Why well, not both of them? You can get the boyfriend out. The boyfriend can go, well, right? Well, the boyfriend yeah, the he dad likes kicked, the boyfriend yeah. out. No, he kicked him out. He kicked him right, out. Right, the boyfriend so, can go. He kicked, the, he kicked the boyfriend out? Yeah. So he's been going back home to the house? So I'm, gonna, gonna, I'm gonna be real. I really much. think sexuality is like a last priority no. for immediate help. Because let me tell you why it matters. Okay. Because there's a part of life where like people get forgiveness for fucking up along the path of self-discovery. So say his mm. dad has been like hiding this part of his life for so long I don't know how to deal with it. This could be a misstep in just discovering yourself. I, I Versus don't, if I don't, dad has been out of the closet, then it's more a deliberate action. Like, you knew this would hurt me immediately. Yeah, There's yeah, no I agree, you, I agree. There's no part of you that, like, have to take a step back. I completely agree, and I don't detract from that matters. whatsoever, but I think when it comes to this person's immediate need, mm. it is about repairing relationships. And well, it's repairing too. Repair then why would sexuality be a worry at all? Because you're because, talking about the path of the forgiveness. Because sexuality may be the reason why you do or do not forgive, is what I'm saying. Because okay. it holds different weight. Yeah. Okay. Even if you don't forgive, I think, I think for me, I'm talking about baseline understanding. I just want to understand what's going on. Because you can still not forgive that. I can decide that both of you guys are, 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 are terrible by. Right. Yes. But like, I would just, for my own understanding, like to compartmentalize the space. Because like, at this point, I've already, already wrote out you both. 
are shitty. You know what I mean? Like at this point, like you're both terrible. I but think like, I'm mad. so now I'm just like, like, what, like, what's the logistics at this point? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm already past the fact that you guys are decent people because you're not. But like, what is the logistics? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, so and, and what does that <laughs> mean so for the long term? Because yeah, you know, like I said, the dad's probably has a whole. You have a whole other connection to him. You were living with him. He said he's living with him for some reason. Mm-hmm. Did they say why? No. Save well, money. COVID, I think it was okay. saving money or something like that. Okay, okay, okay. So, so there's some connection. Who knows? But I, I think it's you're right. You got to understand, but you can't not talk to them. You well, threw one of them out. You're not talking to the dad. I'm the doctor, so let me get my prescription. All right, all right, all right. So I'm curious. Like PAs in the room. Um, so I'm going to advise yes. you first to assess yourself. Don't look outward just yet. Find it within yourself to figure out what would make you most happy. Hmm. Once you figure out what's going to make you most happy, explore those options. Take your dad and your boyfriend out of the situation. What makes anonymous happen? Happy? Like what? At this happening now, what make you most happy and least stressed out? If that is cutting your dad out of your life, do it. If it's not, then do it. You know what's best for you, and no one else can tell you what would be best for this situation. So, and honestly, I want to follow back up. So, like, I want to check back in with this Dr. Dose. Hey, you better call what you in. Now. Yeah. You don't have to give us a name, but I want follow up. Anonymous part two. Green light, red light, pow. It's gays that play. All right, child. We are here for another segment of Gays. Is this segment sponsored? I forget. Oh, no, it's not. All right, not. if you're interested in sponsoring, but we're looking for sponsors. At marketing at thegaylittles.com. This is everyone's favorite segment. Take the most exposure for your brand by contacting us. And this week we're gonna play an edition of Fuck Mary Kill. So with this game, there's gonna be three names that I pick. I'll call out, and then you have to say which one you want to do. Each two. We're gonna do four groups of people. Are y'all ready? No. I'm, so I'm ready. Fuck yeah. one, marry one, kill one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Shit. Um, and it's a, it's a toss up. You know, I love to do things that are all camp. So. Okay. First one is Barack Obama, George Bush, and Donald Trump. Fuck marry kill. Hit me. Which obviously gonna marry. Obviously gonna marry Barack. Okay. I'm gonna. You know, I'd fuck. Uh, <laughs> Georgie. Uh, fuck Georgie. Thank you, fuck Georgina. Georgie, and then I'm gonna kill Trump. Okay. Yo. Oh, yo, what about you, child? Uh, echo. Yeah, oh, I'm, same I'm the same. same. Y'all. <laughs> Just <laughs> lay in the land, baby. I would marry George Bush because I feel like there's some like long term financial stability with the Bush family. Disagree. So, okay. I would fuck Barack because I know he would dig me down real good and would not talk to me afterwards. And then Donald Trump would have to murder our child. Mm-hmm. Get rid of him. Hey. Make it right. spicy. Next, the three are Beyonce, Tyra Banks, and Halle Berry. Wrong crowd, no? Oh, wow. Child. Wait, oh. what? Talk about that step <laughs> term, okay? <laughs> okay. So, what about, let's start you, Hamoo. Um, what was the last name? Halle Berry. So, Halle Berry I'll kill. Oh, damn. Wow. Um, really? But only because I would marry Tyra Banks. Okay. Really? really? Sure. I am in yes. shock. I she's like, I like, I like, I fan on her. Okay. Time. I like her okay. show. Okay. I like, she's like, she's got all this personality and intellect and you get to know it. And Beyonce, she's just beautiful. So I put her in the fuck category. Okay, period. Then you miss Obio. Um, okay. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be hard, but, uh, <laughs> but, um, but okay. Okay. Um, I think I would, um, <laughs> so I don't know who I'm killing. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and kill. No, love what you do. I'm, I'm gonna kill Tyra. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get okay. Tyra. Have a good day. Um, I'm going to have sex with Holly Berry. Okay. She's because I think she's like kind of. I heard she's a little bit toxic, and I think that might be good in the bedroom. Okay. And oh, then oh, I would. Oh, I would oh. <laughs> and then I would marry Beyonce. Okay. And then Jake last. <laughs> so really, really scary. I would fuck Halle Berry as well. Okay. She's just one of the sexiest people I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yeah. Period. Beyonce has the maternal energy that I want in a wife. Well, thank you, you want, for asking for a wife. Yeah, and oh, a period. wife, period. a wifey, maternal okay. that maternal vibe. And then Tyra's the cringiest. I've seen in a woman lately, so I'm gonna kill her. Wow. Oh, she right. makes me cringe a little bit. I would have to do the same. Tyler put those people through it on America's Next Top Model. <laughs> I love that shit. Yeah. You know, I'm not a reason. They disqualified someone from winning because they had got sex traffic. Child. Oh, yeah, she's kind of problematic. Um, I forgot Beyonce, about Beyonce, I'm definitely going to marry. And then, um, Chad, kill Halle Berry. No, yeah, I killed Tyra, so I'm gonna kill Halle Berry too. Um, okay. Next, RuPaul, Ellen, and Willow Smith. Mm, whoa. Girl. Told you it's a toss up channel. RuPaul, Ellen. Okay, can I go first? Yes. Smith. I would marry Willow. I've been fucking with her music lately. She's got this alternative vibe that I'm just like, mm-hmm. I feel like she's coming into her own and I really vibe with it. Mm-hmm. Take took long enough. Um, I would have to kill Ellen just because I don't care who you are, being mean to people just kills me. 
And what was the last one? I'm sorry. Shout out with the um, RuPaul. RuPaul, yeah. Let's let's, let's RuPaul? have sex with RuPaul. He's Come on. Peggy, honey. <laughs> you got I don't know. I feel like I want to pass, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not the name of the know. game. I think um, I don't really know who Willow Smith is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. So I'm going to kill her because I don't know. Who, even though I don't know who it is. Oh I'm God. sorry. No guesses on who Willow uh, Smith is? Slap you. Oh, like Will Smith's daughter? Yeah. Oh, I know her. I like her song. <laughs> okay. My daughter's like her song. Yeah. So, no, she's too sweet. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to marry her, though. Like, oh, no, I'm not having sex with her either. She's too young. Um, she's an adult. She's literally 21. Oh, God, that's so young. You've met um, someone in their 20s before. Not when I was 45. <laughs> when I'm um, going to go with... <laughs> I'm going to go with... I guess I'll... Uh, I, I'll kill Ellen. <laughs> I will... Um, fuck Willow. <laughs> and marry RuPaul. Because <laughs> oh, I will say that RuPaul would be an entertaining person to be married to. I think he'd have something to say. Oh, I agree. I agree. I'd marry Willow Smith. I'd kill RuPaul because of the fracking. And I would um, fuck Ellen. I feel like Ellen would be really good and bad. I don't know. I feel like she'd get me together. What's fracking mean? Um, it's like when they like pump oil and stuff. It is, but it's like bad for the environment. And like he fracks on his ranch. And I think it's funny on my show. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. Know. Yeah, the fracking girl. Mm. The more you know. Okay. Did, did you go? I did, I went. Okay. And then left. Did you so no, he didn't go. He didn't go. <laughs> He's like, this is controversial. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna have. What, what, what was it? What we after? Okay, I'm gonna kill Ellen. No offense, Ellen, but yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to marry RuPaul and have sex with Willow. Lit. Yeah. Period. Okay. <laughs> and then our last category, we're Uh-oh. doing pop divas. Oh, I'm scared. Um, three that I think are overrated. Hot take. Britney Spears, J-Lo, and Rihanna. Oh. Bitch. J-Lo is not. I'll go first. Mm-hmm. We're going to kill J-Lo because I want her to be famous for something for once. Her murder would be iconic. Um... Britney Spears, you want her to be famous I want to help for something. I want to rehabilitate her and get uh-huh. her back. Oh, you're gonna marry a project. You're gonna marry a project. Because okay. I tend to like want to date people that I can help. Like uh-huh. it's a pattern of mine. Uh-huh. I'm not changing it. And then Rihanna, we're gonna have some. Um, Cause she made that song, "Your Sex with Me." So, so amazing. amazing. I'm gonna fuck around and find out. So. Okay. There we go. I'll be on next. I'm going to kill Britney. Sorry. Oh, shit. Um, she said for enough. I know. Oh, sorry, Britney. <laughs> um, <laughs> love you, Britney, but I'm sorry. It's, it's Yeah. I'm going to have sex with J-Lo, oh. and I'm going to marry Rihanna. Okay, Mary, I don't think Rihanna's a marriage type, but okay. Me either, but I, I don't know. we have to figure it out. Let's change a woman, right? <laughs> okay. I'm going to go with the oh. um, have sex with Rihanna, um, kill... Britney. Damn, y'all want the girl's hand. And uh, marry J-Lo for sure. And mine is the exact same. Thank you. Yeah, Rihanna's one of the sexiest women alive. Okay, period. The way she just walks. It spells sex. J-Lo's like a queen. How could you not marry her? And you know, my last fuck, Mary kill is... I'm just kidding, Chuck. <laughs> I was That's like, what? Thank you for tuning in to another um, segment of Gays That Play. And don't forget, if you're interested in sponsoring this segment, please reach out to us at marketing at thegaylios.com. <laughs> Dolls everywhere unite. It's the call to Kiki. All right, dolls. So this is the call to Kiki. The call to Kiki is brought to you by Atlanta Black Pride. Atlanta Black Pride celebrates the unique intersection of being black and gay. Learn more about them at atlantablackpride.org. Dante, you're going to bring us in with the call to Kiki? All right, child. I'm back with my fiddle phone. Time for our weekly injection, child. Because I have not been here for the past, what is it, one or two episodes. It's been a second, baby. Y'all have been missing the, a, a real call to get like a text message to Kiki, but I got you, girls. <laughs> so this week, I, I'm going to give y'all, take a little doll assessment. So it's not like a regular assessment. It's a Ooh. doll assessment. Doll assessment. Um, and get with your friends and just kind of assess how you, what you want for yourself and then what you project into the world. Kind of like what I spoke to in the meat of our episode. It's kind of like mm-hmm. a, if you are telling yourself that you need to be more comfortable being feminine, more comfortable meeting people from different walks of life, or okay with being friends with someone who doesn't make as much money as you, are you also doing that in the world? Are you also making those connections, making those moments with yourself? Are you letting your friend wear heels around you, etc.? We often look at the world as a mirror, and we should really be looking at it more as like how we project. Like, do you see yourself in the world, not how do you see yourself, period. Don't be so insular about the way you deal with the world. I love that. And love do it with time. your friends. Don't do this alone. Make hey. an effort with your group. With your dolls. That's a really, really good call to Kiki. I told you, you're back with the injection. Yes, she is. She got a little injection. She brought a full dose. 
was it? It was a fucking um, a conference call to Kiki. Yeah. Kiki. <laughs> <laughs> well, Obio, I will say um, you have been delightful, and you helped bring a lot of this really good energy to us. Um, and really helped us think through this. So thank you again for being with us today. I completely yeah. agree. Hashtag huge thanks, space. huge kudos. Yeah, yes, yes. and how? Um, and obviously, dolls will have the information for you. But to to reach out to you, how, how best? Obio Jones. Just yeah, so I'm, I'm Obio O Jones. O V I O O J O N E S on all social media platforms. And my website is www.obiojones.com. All right, dolls. You heard it here. We remind you to um, love yourself, love others, and don't forget to smile. Bye-bye. Bye, dolls. Bye.